Hello and welcome back my partners in crime, welcome back to Murder and Lies for another unsolved true crime. Now, as you know we've been going on haven't we for the last few days and we're going to continue on up until about the 20th of December highlighting these cases of the missing that really have still never been found. There is no evidence so it's really important if you know anything about any of these cases that we're discussing that you um, you know, on each of the I think videos there's all different places where you can contact if you don't know who else to contact just contact any like missing people's websites or whatever depending on what country you're in and where these cases are relevant and tell people what you know so today's case is a Martin Doyle case now this is an Irish case this comes from Ireland and this boy um, came, come from um, County Kildare okay in Ireland and um, at a small place called or it was Churchview and it was in um, Suncroft in County Kildare so if you are from the area or you have heard about this case and you have any information on this case please say something all the information where you can contact people and let them know anything will be at the end or throughout this video so thank you for that so let's get on with this poor boy that's been missing for many many years and again no evidence no sightings nothing of him since the day that he went missing it was about 11 20 a.m in the morning when he said to his mum um, i'm just going to pop to the shop that's what he said and so the last sighting of him was about 10 minutes later at 11 30 a.m now um it was a cold october morning Right, so it's the 4th of October, cold, it's cold in England, cold in Ireland, you know, it's cold in most places. Now this boy decided to leave the house without even taking a jacket. I'm just going to pop to the shop, but he'd left his wallet there, you see, with his card in it and everything. Now, listen, my husband does, he often says I'm just going to walk up the shop, and it's literally up the shop, probably as close as this shop was to his home. I'm just going to walk up the shop, and they don't always want to take their wallet, they may just have a few pounds or something on them and they potter off up the shop and come back so that's what he could have done because on his card you see was his last week's wages had just been paid and that card till this day has never been used so there's issues there with this case isn't there but the last sighting as I say was about 11 30 um, a.m. 10 minutes after he left his family home to go to the shop so anyway let's go over what we know um, and the storyline, I suppose the timeline of this case and see if we can find anyone around that can remember anything from the 4th of October 2004 in this uh, church view in Suncroft in County Kildare Island. It's really important if you were there or anywhere near that place at the time or any of the town surrounding that and you know anything that you come forward. As I said, this is the outline really of it. All this is really all we know, and with many of these cases, this is it. You know, very basic details. Once they disappeared, that's it. So Martin, he left his home as I said about eleven twenty after telling his mother that he was going to the local shop. He didn't say what to buy. He didn't say anything at all. He just told her that he left at home his bank card. He also left his keys to this moped. Or something that wasn't working and he left the keys with his mum to get fixed as I said he was only popping to the shop but he did take with him his mobile phone so we have to think why was he going to a shop point one without taking a coat 4th of October very very cold didn't take a coat and but you know sometimes he's only young you know 20 year old probably thought oh, I'm just popping down the shop it's probably run down the shop you know, didn't need the coat. But it could be relevant, we don't know. We just don't know. But at the time, he did not take his coat. So this last sighting of him at 11.30 a.m., 10 minutes later, give or take a couple of minutes, okay? Give or take a couple of minutes. But not very long at all. Now, he was standing at the statue across from the shop, uh, or the, sorry, across from the church, in Suncroft now I'll show you some photos and stuff of that and that may jog your memory but that's where he was standing and it made it sort of they or people believe that he may have been standing there 
either to meet someone, but probably to get a lift from someone. Now, um, and after that, really, that was it. So if he has got into someone's car, which is probably is what's happened here. He had no money on him. Remember, he'd left the bank card at home with his whole week's wages on it. He may have only had a few pounds on him, but he did have his mobile phone. Now, after his disappearance, of course, they've tried to ring Martin on his phone. Of course, his family have tried to ring. And they've rung and it's rung and it's rung for three days. Then all of a sudden, that was it. It stopped. Now, um, listen, we, when you have a mobile phone with you, and it's 2004, right? So I don't know what phone it was. I don't know if they got the code. Or I don't know if they had the capability. I don't think they did then to track and trace the phones and stuff like that. But I would say, with this case, it's relevant that, you see. Because why was he just going to meet someone outside this statue? with no money, no nothing for a lift. He didn't intend to be gone long because he didn't take a coat. He, t he didn't lie to his mum and say, oh, I'll be back in a couple of hours. I'm going here, I'm going there. He said, I'm going to the shop. So I don't think that um, Martin himself um, really believed that he was going to be longer than he was, actually. So I believe this car, whoever picked him up, and the phone are relevant because if this phone is still with this boy, and if this boy, um, I hate to say it because the family believe that this boy is probably still alive, so unless they know something other than this, I, I don't know. But I would assume that when you've not heard from anybody since 2004, we're in 2021, there's been multiple appeals put out. The Garda police have searched everywhere, and the Garda police are the Irish police um, in Ireland. They're called the Garda. Now, they've searched everywhere, and they have no trace of this lad. The family have done multiple appeals. So I would say if this boy is, was probably not abducted because he was 20 year old, I think he may have willingly gone with this person in this car, maybe they arranged to meet this person in this car. Something may have happened, something may have gone wrong, a fight may have ensued. You know, we don't know, it could have been drugs, it could have been any reason at all why he was meeting someone and didn't need it or find it necessary to take a coat and his bank stuff and everything with him. So something's happened to Martin. And I think with the phone ringing for three days, if there was a perpetrator, they never took the phone with them because in them days they wasn't worried, was they, about the phone being found or the phone being traced to the location. They wasn't really worried about that so much in them days. And we are talking about Ireland and it's quite a rural area as well. You know, it doesn't take you long to drive out of these villages into, you know, places where it would be very difficult to find a body. But I actually think the phone is probably still with him and the phone rang for three days because it ran out of battery after that. And I think that's what's happened. As I said though, this is a theory. Now, we don't know, do we, why if Martin decided that it was himself to take himself away to just go without telling his family or friends or anyone where he was going. You know, that, that is also a theory that could have happened. He could have decided enough is enough for one reason or another, arranged to meet or run off with someone and start a new life somewhere else. Now, if that's the case, that's fine. And I've said this before when we have missing cases where we don't know the circumstances around why people have disappeared. But this is definitely a suspicious disappearance. But if... Martin did choose to go off and start a new life. It would be wonderful if he or someone that knows him, someone that knows about where he could be or where he has been, to contact missing people. 
and you can do this anonymously as I've said before you don't need to leave your name or anything but all they want to know is that this boy is alive and well if that's the case now if this case this lad's disappearance is more sinister than that then the person that picked him up in their car was probably the last person to see Martin alive. So did you see anything on that day at around 11.30, 12 o'clock or anywhere in this, you know, vicinity of this area? Did you see uh, Martin in another town close to that with somebody else on that day? Has he ever texted you? Have you ever texted him and had a response back from that phone? You know, all these are questions that the family needs to be answered because there's always someone that knows something. So alive or dead, it would be really great if you could let somebody know what you know because many, many years now have gone past and loyalties are not always the same as they was on the days of when these people went missing. So if you know anything about the disappearance of Martin Doyle from this very small town of Suncroft, this little village in County Kildare in Ireland, who disappeared on the 4th of October 2004, please contact someone and let someone know what you know. It's really important. It really is. It's time to say what you know. Now Martin at the time of his disappearance was five foot seven inches of slim build with short brown hair, blue eyes and pale complexion. At the time of his disappearance he was wearing a navy adidas jumper with a white stripe on the sleeve, navy tracksuit bottoms and white trainers. And that's all he had and that's all he had apart from the mobile phone with him. That's it. That's it. Now his poor mother and family have been struggling for years to find information out. You know, and I've said before that when you have a child going missing, even at the age of 20, when they tell you, they just pop into the shop, see you in a minute, mum, and they never return. It's really has been devastating. It has devastated her life her family, it really, really has. Now his brother David has made many appeals and he is appealing to the people or person, or persons should I say, who gave Martin a lift on that day to come forward. Now, you may have just given him a lift. Where did he go? Who did he go off with? Right, you just come forward because someone gave this boy a lift. He also emphasises that if you've received any text messages, as I've just said, from him, from before or after he left, or on that day especially, let people know. Get in touch with people, because people just need to know. Now, he sort of says these areas that are focused on largely, uh, of course, Sunny Croft, uh, Bally Sachs, now, I could have done this all wrong, um, Bally Shannon, Nuri, or I'm going to have to put these up. I'll put these up. But this in certain areas, right, that are, they believe that are keen focus, and probably because they're quite local to that area. I mean, there's not a lot on this case, and as I say, with all these cases that we do, and especially these ones, because I want to highlight that these are men. This is a 20 year old man that's gone missing, just like that, vanished, gone, without a trace leaves his home to go to the shop and is never seen again. So it's really important that when we talk about the missing, you just don't think it's children or women because men are very vulnerable too. Lots of things happen to men, young men, that we don't expect, you see, when we're doing, when we're looking at missing cases. Everyone has this perception that men at 20, you know, I do, I've got children that are older, I've got a son that's older. And, you know, you relax a bit, don't you, as they get a bit older thinking that's all right, they're not going to be taken, they're not going to be this. But, you know, really, you're vulnerable at any age. No matter if you're female or male, you are vulnerable. People are vulnerable because some people are so trusting 
some people are just in the wrong place at the wrong time and this what could have happened here you know there's lots of reasons why people disappear but it's not just females it's not just children it's males of many many ages and that's why I wanted to highlight these cases and to show you that there are still so many people out there from all different walks of life from all different countries around the world that are still missing this Christmas and these families are devastated they're devastated they just want to know what happened to their children now Mrs Doyle his mum says it's a living nightmare and she says this um, this is what she told the Irish Times around her son's disappearance she said that it's left the Pam family feeling powerless with nowhere to turn really they've tried everything they have it's been a living nightmare she says for all these years don't forget this is 2004 when her child went missing at the age of 20 it's a long time to have these feelings isn't it she said it's just been hell there's nowhere for us to turn we haven't received any counseling or support since martin disappeared someone has to do something something has to be done she's so desperate to find her son that they are trying to do this themselves but as i've said in 2004 in ireland you know with cctv probably wasn't any the phone i don't know if they could have traced it i don't think they could have at that at that stage trace it but there's a lot more i think maybe even now maybe they could do with the phone we don't know we don't we don't know um because i think that phone would be still with him i really do um you know but what else can the guards have done they've had the helicopters out they've searched and everywhere but if this lad had arranged to be picked up by someone or as he stood there maybe walk into the shop you know and someone's drove up and said you know he knew them i think he must have known this this person or persons that he's got in his car with and as i said something's happened that we don't know about and um that's why he's never returned it's 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 difficult you know and it's so difficult for the people left behind because their lives stop as well they really do their lives just are put on hold it's like going in slow motion and that's how a lot of people that have missing you know i have family members and loved ones that are missing describe it it's like you're living life but you're living it in slow motion it's this grieving process now many people believe that their children are still alive and they're going to walk through that door and everything's going to be great in the end because that's how they cope and we've spoke about this before that's that coping coping mechanism that you need actually to probably continue to wake up yourself every morning and get through your daily life when this something like this is hanging over you and hanging over your family mrs Doyle said it creates divorce it creates trauma in the family arguments you because you're struggling to understand and comprehend why someone or why your beloved son has either left on his own accord and doesn't want to be around you or has been taken by someone either he knows or he doesn't know and is probably never going to return either one is going to affect you in such a way that it's difficult to cope with life so listen you know what to do if you know anything about these cases please contact all these people that i have listed there for you to contact as i've said before there's always someone that knows something and it may be the most insignificant piece of evidence that you do, you know that you think means nothing that's irrelevant to it but in the end it is and it's that one piece isn't it that one phone call that one little bit of a mention that one thing oh i remember that i remember seeing that or someone told me about that someone said something about that i'll just let them know because what's the harm even if you're wrong no harm done but what if you're right and what if it's that one piece that fits into that jigsaw puzzle that solves the mystery of where martin Dorr 
is. So thank you for watching. Uh, the next case coming up is another young lad that went missing and he went missing from Tenby and Wells. So you know what to do, thumbs up if you found this case interesting, you can like it, you can um, subscribe to it, you can share it if you would, you can talk about these cases, you can highlight these cases, it would be really good if you would do that. You can donate to any of the missing person charities, it really, really helps them to keep the, um, these people name out there and people, they're alive and relevant really in the public eye. Because you never know, you know, there's so many people that go missing each year that we need to start finding out why and bringing them home. So thanks for watching. Till the next time. Bye-bye.